Welcome back. We're talking about the multivariable Gaussian, multivariate Gaussian. And one thing I should have mentioned here in this, the definition is that this univariate Gaussian could be, we allow it to be degenerate. So this is possibly degenerate. And that's okay. So remember, we define, we extended the definition of just a univariate Gaussian to a degenerate univariate Gaussian. And this degenerate one, uh, it, it's the, the distribution of this random variable is a point mass at mu, at the mean, and it, it has no density. So, so this the, the previous definition does not apply. And when we when we define the multivariable Gaussian, <coughs> then we allow these these univariate Gaussians to be degenerate. So they could just be point masses, or uh, yeah, they could just be point masses. And so here's another definition. You know, a multivariable Gaussian, a multivariate Gaussian, is degenerate. So we say it's, well, I'll say X multi, you know, Gaussian distributed is degenerate. If the determinant of C of its covariance matrix is zero. And it turns out that this is a generalization of the the, the previous case that a, a degenerate Gaussian lives in a in a subspace. Alright, so let me give you some intuition here to build your some some drawings to build your intuition for what these things look like. So let's make some, let's do some examples. So here's some intuition. Multivariate Gaussian. Let me draw, I'll draw a bunch of examples. So here's a bunch of axes. These are each going to be an example. I don't know, maybe four, four or five of them. Will be five, and so it could look like. So it, these are all going to be two-dimensional examples, just so I because I can draw them. So it'd be something sort of it's always sort of oval shaped, you know. It's got like this sort of denser in the middle. I'm so I'm, what I'm drawing is sort of if you were to draw samples from this distribution, kind of what it would look like. So for this one, the mean might be around around there. And here's another one. It could be it could be aligned with the axes, you know, it could be like sort of a oval shaped distribution that's aligned with the axes, and maybe this one's a little more spread out than the other one, something like that. And so let me draw, well I'll draw a few more and then, then we'll come back to that. It could also be, it could also live in a subset, well an affine subset of the plane. Let me make that something like this. So this is all supposed to be on a single line here. And this would be a degenerate case. Because it has it has no width in this direction. And it could also be it could it could be centered at the origin, something like this. Always do that. It doesn't have to be. Maybe tightly sort of tight there. And sphere, you know, it could be circular sort of shaped. And it could also of course just be like a single point, and that would be a that would be also be degenerate. All right, so these are all examples and so the you know, you probably get the idea, but just to to make it clear, if I were to draw the the level sets of this this distribution. These are all supposed to be oval sort of shapes. Not drawing them very well. The level sets are where the density is constant. So on each of these lines, you know, if you have you, if you've ever gone hiking or you know in the mountains and you're you have a map, usually you have a topographic map, and the map has these lines on it, and the lines are the they call them contour lines in that context at least. And in mathematics, so, so the contour lines are where the elevation is constant, right? 
and so these are the contour lines of this this function. They're where the function is constant. On each of these lines, the function is constant. The, the density function. I haven't def I haven't defined the density function for multivariate Gaussian, but we'll see that a little in a little bit what that is. So so and and in math we call those the level sets. So they're a little hard to draw for that one. This one there's there's circles. You get the idea. All right. So those are some examples. Those are all examples. And let me give you some non-examples. Here's a few non-examples. These are not Gaussian. I'll draw them. Or maybe I'll put them in red. So here's something which is not Gaussian. Whoops, let's make it red. So maybe if it had like a little cluster over here and then another cluster over here, that would not be Gaussian. Another one would be maybe something like, you know, maybe it's sort of V-shaped distribution. That would not be Gaussian. Um, maybe if it was like sort of like half, like one of these, like with only half of it or something, you know, if you, you chopped off half of this distribution and it was like, you know, this sort of half an ellipse, that would not be Gaussian. Oh, and let me give you one other. This one's an interesting one. Whoa. This is, if you had something like this, and then it was sort of x equals y when it was small, and then it then it flipped. And when it gets bigger, it's like, it's got a minus sign. So this is not Gaussian. All right, so these are non-examples. All right, so now that we have a little intuition, let me give you a mathematical example of a Gaussian, of a, a random variable which is Gaussian distributed. So here's a, here's a very useful fact. The simplest, sort of, in some sense, the simplest Gaussian. So I'll say independent, independent components, independent coordinates. X1, we have some random, random variables X1 through Xn. They are independent with Xi, so each of them is a is a univariate Gaussian with mean mu i and variance sigma i squared. They each have their own mean and, and variance. This happens if and only if. So that and that's that's for all i, you know, all i equals one to n. All of these guys. That happens if and only if the vector. We form the vector of all of them is Gaussian distributed, multivariate Gaussian, with mean mu and covariance C, where we just put all the means in a vector, mu1 up to mu n, and the covariance in this case, I'll put it down here, the covariance matrix C we line up the variances along the diagonal and it's zero everywhere else so it's a diagonal matrix sometimes we write sometimes we write this as diag sigma 1 squared up to sigma n squared diagonal matrix and this is in some sense the simplest the simplest case and this one well i sort of draw it here let me draw it Maybe I'll give you, so in two dimensions, this looks like this case. Well, but it's not necessarily centered. Let me let me draw another one here. Draw another couple, actually. So here's one. In 2D, well, let me put it over here so we have space. 
So in 2D, it's just, and then I'll do it. I'll try to do a 3D one. In 2D, this looks like it's it, the level sets are are just circles, right? So the level sets are just these circles. Actually, no, they don't have to be circles. They, they, they have to be axis aligned. Sorry. Not necessarily circles. It's more, so it's more like more like this one here. Yeah, so that's 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 a better example. So they're axis aligned. They have no covariance. And maybe I'll try to draw a 3D example here. So it would be sort of like there are these sort of ellipsoids in 3D. The level sets are these kind of ellipsoids. Maybe if they were transparent, I'll draw one inside of another. Something like this. Sort of like a rugby ball shaped thing. And the mean is always that point in the center. So this is these are when the individual coordinates are independent. So whenever you've got a diagonal diagonal covariance matrix, then you know you, that you have independent coordinates. And 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 it's diagonal and it's uh, Gaussian. And here's a here's a nice fact that's very closely associated with this. Something very special about the Gaussian is that if x, I'll put x in Rn, is Gaussian, I put that so you know it's multivariate Gaussian, then we have the, vol the following very special property. xi and xj, two co coordinates of this, this x, are independent if and only if their covariance is zero. Another way to say this is that they are independent if and only if the correlation is zero or they're uncorrelated. Uncorrelated, uh, the, the covariance is zero, is zero if and only if the correlation is zero. If you look at look at the video on covariance and, and correlation, you can see that. All right, and this is a very special property. Right? So this is just a warning. This does not hold. Let me write that. It's important. Warning: This does not hold. Does not hold in general. Uh, you know, for let me say, does not necessarily hold for non-Gaussians. This is a very unique property of the Gaussian. And since indep independence is such a, a very, very useful property to have, this characterization of independence in this special case of a Gaussian it, it's really it makes makes life like makes life very nice when you're working with a Gaussian. All right, so now let me give you another yet another warning. Um, so here it turned out that each of the when each of these individual coordinates was Gaussian and they were independent, then we could just line them all up in a vector and get a Gaussian a multivariate Gaussian. But in general, you can't do that. You, the individual coordinates being Gaussian does not imply that the vector of them is Gaussian. Okay, so I'm out of time in this video, but we'll, we'll let's let's come back to that in in the next video. All right, we'll be back.